Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Emma. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can investigate processes with volatility. Do you want an introduction to how volatility can be used to analyze a memory dump? We have another video on our channel which talks exactly about that. You can find the link to it in the description box below. A memory dump will always have information about processes that were active on the system at the time the memory dump was taken. I will demonstrate how you can acquire process information from a memory dump using Volatility 2 and Volatility 3. Let's start with Volatility 2. I have a memory dump here that was acquired from a Windows 7 machine. We can view the active process listing on the memory dump using the PSList plugin. Now, I will tell you about the various columns of information in this output. The offset column indicates the hexadecimal value where this process can be found within the memory dump. Then you can find the name of the process, followed by its process ID and parent process ID. This column denotes the number of threads utilized by a process. If you see a process with zero active threads, then it means that process has exited. This column refers to the number of handles used by a process. When a process is in execution, it may utilize information from a registry key or from another file. Each such usage is referred to as a handle. This column indicates the session a process is part of. When a Windows computer boots up, critical system services are started. They are always placed in session 0. You can see that critical system services are in session 0. Whenever a user logs on to that computer, they are assigned a new session. Here, one user has been logged in and has been assigned session 1. When another user logs in, they would be assigned session 2. WoW 64 is a subsystem in Windows operating system that allows 32-bit applications to run on 64-bit windows. A value of 1 in this column indicates that this executable is a 32-bit one. We have an article in our library which talks about the implications of WoW 64 processes. You will find the link to it in the description box below. The start column indicates the time at which the process was started in UTC. Whenever you begin an investigation, identify the time zone the device is operating in. You may need to perform time zone conversions during the investigation. When there is no exit time in this column, it means that the process is still active. I would also recommend getting familiar with the names and functions of critical system processes. Services.exe is the process for Service Control Manager. It is responsible for launching all services on the system. Typically, only one instance of this process is active. If you see more than one instance, then you must investigate that further. Its process ID here is 484. svchost.exe is a process that is used to load services from DLL files. It is always the child of services.exe. A number of instances of SVC host would be active on a system at a time. Some malware create malicious processes with names that look similar to legitimate process names. For example, the O in SVC host may be replaced by zero. Knowing about expected behavior would help you rule it out when investigating suspected malicious behavior. I would recommend also knowing about the behavior of other critical processes like lsas.exe, winlogon.exe, explorer.exe, smss, etc. Next, we will look at the output of PS3 plugin which is used to display the active process listing as parent-child relationships. A parent process is displayed first, and its child processes are indented towards the right. When investigating malicious processes, this output is helpful to identify whether a malicious process has started any child processes, 
or which process has triggered the malicious process into execution. The PS scan plugin performs a deeper scan for processes in the memory dump. It can identify processes that have exited or those hidden intentionally by malware authors. This plugin is particularly useful when you are investigating malware within a memory dump. Let's assume you have an executable file, an exe. When you execute it, a process is created for it in memory. All the code and data required for that executable to run is present within its process. During execution, the process may import some dynamic link libraries. Those libraries would also be present in memory and associated with the process that called it. In this image, it looks like the process and imports are stored consecutively, one after the other. However, within memory, they are not stored consecutively. They are stored in equal sized chunks, called pages, throughout memory. In volatility, there is one plugin that helps to dump this executable present in the memory dump. There is another plugin that enables us to dump all the individual pages associated with this process. Another plugin enables us to extract only a DLL used by a process. We will explore those plugins now. We can carve the binary of a specific process from the memory dump using the proc dump plugin. Using PID switch, we can specify the process ID of the binary that we want to carve. Then we will specify the directory in which we want the process to be dumped. Here, dot signifies the current directory. We can find the extracted process binary here. If this binary had been malicious, and antivirus signatures had been developed for it, then Windows Defender would have raised an alert. This binary can then be subjected to static and dynamic malware analysis. I would recommend performing this task in a sandboxed environment. Mendump plugin can be used to carve all the pages in memory that are used by a specific process. You can specify an empty directory to dump the specific pages to. This process takes some time to complete. Once the process is complete, you will find a single file in which all the pages have been grouped together. Notice the file size. You can run strings utility on this file to see if any suspicious strings exist in the process's memory. DLL list plugin can be used to view the list of DLLs used by a process by specifying its process ID. You can dump all these DLLs to a separate directory using the DLL dump plugin. I leave this one as an exercise for you. You can also dump one specific DLL by specifying its base address using the base switch. I will copy this base address and paste it here. I will also specify a directory to dump the DLL to. We can see that this single DLL has been extracted from the memory dump. This task comes in handy when you suspect a malicious DLL to be loaded by a binary. We have another video on our channel that talks about how a malicious DLL can be investigated. You will find the link to it in the description box below. Let's perform the same tasks using Volatility 3. The information in the active process listing is the same as in Volatility 2. Only the columns are interchanged a bit. To view parent-child relationships of all active processes, the Windows.ps tree plugin can be used. Hidden and exited processes can be identified using the Windows.ps scan plugin. The process of acquiring a process's binary, its memory map and dumping the DLLs is different on Volatility 3. Let's explore it now. 
To acquire the process binary in memory, the Windows.ps list plugin is used with the dump option. The dumped process is stored in the current directory. To extract all the pages associated with the process, the memapp plugin is used. A list of all the pages extracted is displayed. This command takes some time to complete. Once it is done, we can see the extracted set of pages. Notice the file size. Next, we will dump all the DLLs associated with process 496 into a separate directory. I have created an empty directory for this task. With volatility 3, we need to specify the file name and the output directory first. Then we specify the plugin to use. Here we use DLL list with the dump option, just like we did with PS list. Here is the list of extracted DLLs used by process 496. I hope you have a good idea about how processes within a memory dump can be investigated using Volatility 2 and Volatility 3. You can apply this knowledge when investigating malicious processes within a memory dump. We have another video on our channel demonstrating this. You will find the link to it in the description box below. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!